Hey everyone, it's Logan here, and um, today I'm bringing you a video about stepper motors. Uh, now, you may recall my last video was about AC servo motors, and you can find that link down in the description below, uh, specifically Mitsubishi servo motors. And just as a quick re rehash, if you haven't seen that one, um, in this case they have the phases inside, we have an encoder on the bottom. The encoder is actually a little glass disc that spins and keeps track of the position. Uh, in this case with an optical sensor that reads lines as it goes around. Uh, that motor I showed in the last one actually has another section in between that's a brake that will clamp down on the motor and keep it from spinning unless power is applied to release that brake. Uh, the stepper motor is a little bit different, although it is possible to get stepper motors that do those things. Uh, they can have an encoder at the bottom. Most don't. Uh, most are just almost like a dumb motor. They're, they're pulsed, they're told to do something, and they attempt to do that with no feedback to the user uh, for any of that. Or in this case, it does feedback and the whole motor will shut down, throw an alarm code uh, if it doesn't move correctly, uh, or if any number of other problems are wrong. This has zero feedback. You have a four pin power connector, and that's it. There is nothing else. So I'm gonna open this up here in just a second uh, and show you what's inside. Okie dokie, so here we have it. This is the inside of that motor. Now, I don't know exactly what gauge wire this is. Um, I'm guessing, if I had to guess, it'd be either 24 or maybe 22 gauge. Uh, looks, like it's, looks like it's doubled up on the wiring there. So I opened up another one. So the reason I have this is that uh, it's something that got dropped where I work. Uh, and I think everything, the tolerances are just so tight on this that just an ever so slight squeeze on this allowed it to not turn. At first I thought it was a bearing issue, but opening it up, I can see that the bearing spins just fine. So I think the rotor in there is actually impacting the walls of the stator. Um, so, this one's toast, but uh, I don't know. I'm going to see what I can do. But, as you can see in there, there's actually teeth on both the stator and the rotor. And what happens is, every time you pulse, uh, send power to this motor, it's going to spin. It's going to move one step. That's why they call it a stepper motor. And in this case, it's 1.8 degrees per step, so 200 steps per rotation. Um, as a result, stepper motors are almost always much slower than those servo motors. But uh, you can also get pretty fine control in terms of how it moves. You can be pretty accurate despite having no feedback. Now this is what we at our shop call a, a, a triple stack. I don't know if that's really the official name for it, but it's basically three times the length of a, a single motor. You can get single motors that are a third or you can get what we call double stacks or the triple stack. So the triple stack's gonna have more power overall. And this one's actually specifically from Automation Direct. It's called SureStep. Let's see, one, one, whoa, whoa. Almost had a malfunction there. 1.8 degrees per step, and that's how much torque it has, 1,288 ounce inches at 6.3 amps. So that's full load current. Uh, it is possible, but the controller that you connect is really going to be what determines how much amperage you're outputting. Uh, you're going to have a stepper drive, which I don't have one here. Uh, someday I'd, I'd like to do uh, a video on that. But basically that's what's going to be in charge of outputting voltage and amperage, and that's, that, that'll be in charge of that. However, I have another one here. Um, I think this is a double, but this is a smaller one. This one is actually called NEMA 34, and that has to do with the, the bolt spacing uh, here. You can see this got beat up when I got dropped and then other things happened to it too. But this bolt spacing right here in the corner, these are what actually keep it uh, together. But these corner bolts have a certain distance apart and that's called NEMA 34 in this case or NEMA 23, uh, that's the bottom here, NEMA 23 for the smaller one. So the smaller motors of course have less power but I tore this one apart and you can see what the stator, I'm sorry, what the rotor actually looks like. And interesting that they have all these different sections, but these are magnets. 
And these are actually pretty powerful magnets. Uh, they'll snap to just about anything. If I put this up against the side there, uh, it's you really have to pull hard to get it off. It's, it's pretty powerful. Um, in this case, both of these bearings work as well, so I'm not sure why this one stopped working. Could have been a short in there if there's just if there's too much power. But I started pulling this one apart so you could maybe see what's going on in here. So again, it's got three wires in here. One is for one phase, and the other is for the other. Most stepper motors are going to be two phases. They're not actually going to be three phase the way the, the servo motor is. Basically, you have power coming in one and then back out the ground, power coming in the other, back out the ground. And every time you pulse one, it moves, and pulse the next one, it moves. That's how that works. Now, what they've actually done here, though, is, is to get more current, they've got two... Oh, sorry here. They've got two... There you go wires that are wrapped together. And these look like they're probably 28 gauge, could be 26 gauge. They're pretty darn small. There's not a lot to those. But they've got them wrapped around, so it actually comes around twice, and each together they wrap around. And those are in parallel, which means the same voltage, you're actually going to get twice the total amperage. The reason you might want to do that is because these thinner gauge wires are easy to wrap around tight spaces and fold in a very tight bend like this. But smaller wires aren't going to carry a lot of current. So by doubling up, you get ease of uh, wrapping them, ease of, uh, of creation, uh, but then you get twice the current. So you're basically taking a wire that's three gauges bigger than it. So if this was 26, you'd be looking at instead maybe a 23 gauge wire. Um, these plugs, these motors don't usually come with plugs. They're just raw leads and then my company has put those on there. So there is another wire as you can see here too. So this is probably actually the ground and one of these is the return, maybe the blue, I'm, I'm not really sure. But the other really cool thing is micro-stepping, and you really have to get into the, the controller for that, the actual drive. Uh, but micro-stepping is where instead of applying full voltage and zero voltage to each phase, full, zero, full, zero, and then rotating that so you switch it up, micro-stepping applies anywhere from full and zero to half and half, or anywhere in between. It could be 90% and 10%. And by doing that, you can actually get in between those steps. And depending upon how well your controller can control precisely those voltages and keep them stable, will actually tell you uh, how fine of a control you can have. You can actually get a lot more pulses per turn, so you can get a lot more accuracy, at least in theory. Uh, and that's, in fact, what we use on uh, for our application, generally speaking, because you get much more uh, smooth control. Uh, when this is all put together and, and working properly, each you can turn it by hand, and each time you do, you feel the chunk, 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 chunk as those teeth engage in the each step. But in micro-stepping, you don't get all those little chunks because it's the voltage is never or rarely zero. It's, in, it's instead some proportion of the two. Well, I hope you guys like this a lot. Um, I'm trying to do more of these motor videos. It's kind of dependent on when I get dead drives coming in. Uh, but certainly, you know, if you like this, I might even look to just get different types of drives and open them up. Um, you know, even if it's even, even if I don't have to wait around for them, maybe just, uh, you know, go ahead and buy them and, and show you guys what's inside them, how they work. So hope you like this. If you do, uh, you know what to do. If not, feel free to to dislike it and of course leave any comments i'll be happy to read over them and anything else you guys want to see definitely let me know about that too thanks for watching and have a great day